Um, sure, it's not to listen to me, but to worship God, and that's the main thing. As you can see, Tony isn't here. Um, he couldn't quite make it back in time from the memorial service he did down for, I believe it was his grandmother? Kathy's grandmother. Kathy's grandmother, sorry. Um, so anyway, last Sunday he got the elders together and said he needed someone to do the message and they all turned to me and said it was my turn, so <laughs> here I am. Um, I was asked this morning, do you get nervous getting up there to preach? And I said, oh yeah. Um, but anyway, it, it is an honor to be able to speak to all of you and I just pray that uh, God will give me the words to, uh, to the message that he wants you to hear today. Um, it's doing a little bit different thing than I normally do. Uh, normally I pick out a topic and then I, I go through the topic, various verses in the Bible. And um, this time I decided, well, it's a little bit harder for me to do. And that's actually just go through verses and uh, exegete them, talk about them. And I've always been impressed with the preachers that can take like one or two verses and spend three or four weeks on it. Uh, usually I read over them and say, oh, okay, yeah, Jesus walked on the water, okay. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's important and neat, and then I just go on. So anyway, what I decided to try and do today is I wanted to go through what I'm going to be reading is like the first four verses of Hebrews. Um, just to give a slight background of, of Hebrews, uh, traditionally, it's not really known who wrote the book. Uh, there's been a lot of suggestions. Um, some say Paul wrote it, others say Barnabas, um, Clement, Apollos, um, various other people like that, but there, it's just not known. Um, I personally think it's very likely to me, which doesn't mean a lot, but um, it's written in such a Pauline manner that even if they say it's probably not written by Paul because it's in a different style and format than what he usually does, but um, I just think that uh, a scribe could have been listening to his teachings and wrote it down, much like Mark did with Peter. But it doesn't really matter who wrote it because it wouldn't be any more canonical if we did know. It's a very in-depth uh, book to study and sometimes hard, and I wonder if uh, Peter wasn't talking about Hebrews when he said there are some things about Paul's writings that are very difficult, and a learned take and twist, twist some of the things around. So anyway, what I'd like to do is um, go through Hebrews. This, the theme of it is, is Christ is far superior and greater than any priest, prophet, or even the Old Covenant. He's come to fulfill it. And, um, well, just to fulfill it. Um, so what I'd like to do is we'll read the first four verses and then kind of go through them. It says, God, having spoken long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days spoke to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the words of his power who having accomplished cleansing for sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. Sometimes when we read things, it's kind of easy to pass over. And I mean, we can read verses several times and not see 
some of the really important things. Um, how many of us at various times have asked God, please, you know, in your, in your times of need and down and doubt, say, God, speak to me. And I know, I, you know, I have. Thank you, Dean. <laughs> but um, I've asked a lot. You know, God, I need to hear from you. I, I, I want to hear from you. And sometimes there's a little bit of a mild rebuke from God. And it's not that he doesn't sometimes speak in my heart, but you look at these verses, and it says, God, having spoken long ago in the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, he has last day spoke to us in his Son. Now we'll go on from there, but what's interesting is it says he has spoken to us. And he spoke many times and in many ways. In the old days, before Christ, there's actually kind of two phases that are talked about there. And the first phase is through prophets. And his typical way of speaking was through the prophets. He didn't necessarily write things in the sky or thunder from mountains like he did at Sinai. He would speak specifically to prophets who would then write things down and distribute what God has said. Um, sometimes you can say, God, why don't, why don't you do it? I don't like that. You know, why don't you speak to me? But the lesson of this is, is you know, and through, well, let's go on with um, the second portion is he spoke through his son. It doesn't say he spoke through the apostles, which he did, but he spoke through his son, which is indicating a far superior, you know, the, he's speaking to the son who's speaking to us. Um, so it's much more authoritative, I guess you could say. Um, so he wants us, he wants us to immerse ourselves in the scripture. What we need in our problems in our daily lives is in the scriptures. Okay, it, we don't need to ask. Um, you know, you get Mormons come up to you and say, well, why don't you pray about Joseph Smith if he's a prophet or you know, stuff like that. And, you know, if, if you don't need to pray about the fact that if Joseph's prophet is preaching that there's many gods and that you can become a god, you don't need to pray about that because it's all in the scriptures. You know, so God is talking to you through the scriptures. That's why you need to learn and immerse yourself in them. And the interesting thing is it says in many portions, in many ways. Um, and portions would be like places, areas, stuff like that, and in many ways. Like he spoke to many different prophets in different circumstances. Some were in peace, some in war, some more learned than others. And in many ways, you know, the same type of thing, so that if somebody doesn't quite get Leviticus, which I, I, I don't, um, you can go to uh, you know, Ezekiel or Job, or if you don't get Ezekiel with the many wheels within wheels and the, you know, understanding that, you can go to, to Job or Jonah and you know, get a message there. So he spoke, there's something in there for everybody, okay? And I mean, it may not specifically talk about, should I take drugs or something, you know, something like that. Yeah, you, you know, your body's a temple of God, so you don't want to defile it. I mean, the principles are there. Okay, phase two is through Christ, which was, is the Son, 
He's far superior over the prophets. He completed the revelation. Um, and <laughs> so, and um, okay, let me go here. So, and then we go into the other verses where it says that he's appointed heir of all things through whom he made the world. Now, some, some people misuse that term. I, appointed is say, look, he, he was appointed. Originally, he wasn't the son of God. He wasn't, you know, the second person. God came down and... Um, you know, took a, a, a good person and then appointed and come and be a part of our Godhead and we'll make you, you know, appoint you heir. But then if you go into the rest of the verse, it says, through him also he made the worlds. And who is the radiance of his glory. I mean, you can't just say that about a mere man. It's when the worlds were created, Jesus... Though, of course, just uh, as the second person of the Trinity was there. He, the worlds were made through him. He created all things. So he's not a, a demigod, or he wasn't appointed. Uh, it's called adoptionism, where he was adopted by God into, in, into the Godhead. And of course, he was appointed heir. Why was he appointed? What does that mean? Okay, he was appointed heir because of the sacrifice on the cross. He accomplished what God the Father had set the Son out to do. And um, then it talks about being a creator. And. Uh, because of that, we can have assurance because he's a creator and appointed heir of all things. I mean, that's everything on the earth, you know, in the universe, everything. So if he is said, as, um, as he said in John, the book of John, that no one, I will, what, the God, what God the Father has given me and is appointed to me will come to me and I will lose none of them. Or when Paul talks about no one can take you out of his hands, you know, he will lose none of those. He's going to accomplish that because he is the heir of all things. And what he says is going to happen in the end will happen. So we don't have to worry about that. And the assurance. Well, it was last week, D asked me, said, what's the difference between faith and hope? And it's a little hard because sometimes they can cross over and be pretty close together. But um, if you go to Hebrews 11.11, 11, it talks about faith is, is the assurance of the hope that we have. Hope to me is, okay, I sure hope that Christ can save me. You know, he says, you know, he has, he, you have that hope that you're going to heaven. But a sh faith is when what gives you that assurance that what the hope is, what you're hoping for, will happen. And because Christ is the creator of all things, the heir of all things, then these things will happen. And just to go back to the to in verse two, it says in these last days. You kind of think, okay, he's talking about last days. This was two thousand years ago. And and were those the last days? Yes, those were the last days, and we're living in the last days. Um Last days is, think about a war that's being fought. Say the Battle of Gettysburg was basically 
when the war was won. There was still other fighting going on, but essentially the war was won. And now Christ has put everything under his feet. He's conquered, he's fought, he's, you know, he's conquered death, he's the ruler of death, he's the heir, he owns everything. Things are still happening. You know, just like in World War II when the atom bombs dropped, the war was over, but there was still fighting for years in some of the remote islands by the Japanese. But the war is over, and he is one. And so, he has accomplished his revelation. There will be no phase three as far as revelation because he's given us everything we need. That's not saying that from time to time he can't put something in our hearts, you know, but uh, as far as revelation, you know, it's, it's all right here. You know, this is all we need. And uh, I know it's kind of a short message, but uh, I, I hope, I hope it was <laughs> worthwhile. And um, I really pray that, uh, that anybody that needs it, that has to come forward or, you know, that still hasn't accepted Christ, that knowing that he has conquered everything, that he's, he's uh, like I said in here, the heir, you know, that, that he can accomplish anything that he has said he's accomplished. Okay, and that you can accept that. Okay. Well, thank you much. I think we have one last song. Like I said, I know it's a short message. But, uh, and then Dana will come up and give the closing prayer. I appreciate that.